Hey everybody, so I hope you've had a very, very good day. Um, so I'm going to experiment with something a little bit different. Um, so you've probably seen that I do the woodworking vlogs and it's, I don't really want to sit in front of a camera for like an extended period of time just talking, looking at myself. I kind of find that disturbing. Um, so I'm going to try just a nice, gentle, pleasant chat Yes, the camera's rolling, but there's no need to see my face and we don't need to go into that. But I wanted to maybe explore a few things and just have a chat about stuff that I think about. And if you feel that it's too long-winded or boring, you're more than free to say that. You know, it's um, it's a free country, share your opinions. Um, but I was going to discuss a couple of things. Um, so I just did one of these um, YouTube shorts and you might see if you're um watching the channel that i do started to do those shorts more frequently and one of the reasons is i don't know i think it it could be slightly narcissistic which is not, not a great quality um but at the same time it helps you maybe um reach an audience sometimes and definitely the viewership for a short is just it's like chewing gum type thing where it's like you see uh a hand plane taking a nice shaving or, or whatever it might be you can't really learn much with a short um for instance like with these clamps that i just talked about that i picked up from lidl which is like a, a german uh, discount supermarket um you can maybe get a point over in a minute which is which is quite good um yeah and on those clamps i can speak a bit more about them here it's um those of you are familiar familiar with the um, kind of discount German supermarket model, they've got this kind of um, middle aisle where there's like, um, it's not seasonal produce because it's not fresh, but there's like this turnover of, of stuff all the time. And I always keep a look out there because a lot of the stuff is, is rubbish, but some of the stuff is fine. I've got a little drill driver and for like home woodworking, it's perfect, doesn't cost a great deal. And these clamps, it's like you buy three clamps for nine quid and the bigger ones for nine quid doesn't cost you a great deal. And I think it's well worth highlighting those things. You know, it's um, if you're not careful, you can soon be drawn into, you know, watching a lot of sponsored content um, where there's maybe the more recognized brands like I think there's Bessie and various other ones and thinking, oh, pff, I need to get that super high quality. Um, and I think I'm well qualified to talk about things like clamps because, you know, whether you use um, industrial machines like I do at work for making joinery and, you know, do use hand tools at times as well. You know, it's not just, you know, plug in a CNC. That's not my world. Clamps, you use them every day. And these, these F clamps do seem pretty substantial. So, you know, I can recommend them. Um, you know, if you find different, if you find that they've fallen to bits, you know, stick it in the comments, but I, I think they're quite good. Um, and that's one of the nice things about doing videos in this way. I um, I used to do videos back in, I think I, I, I deleted my channel in 2016, and that was for um, personal health reasons. I'd um, become quite unwell. Um, I think some of that was trying to work too hard on things like YouTube. There was an underlying health issue which came to the fore anyway, but putting too much pressure on yourself was a good way to highlight that. And there was other things that had happened, you know, nothing tragic, family still, well, it was tragic, but the family still together. It was something that happened out of my direct family. And it was like, do you know what? Uploading rubbish onto, onto YouTube isn't the right time. But coming back to it now a lot's changed um it's yeah very very different i this isn't meant to be to sound sour um but it might but there's some you might some of you people might be familiar with the there's a, a channel i don't know whether you have it in other places in the world um in the uk at least when i was younger as one i think it's still going called qvc which is just like a home shopping channel where you can literally tune in and you can watch people like talk endlessly about products that they're trying to offload and and do all of that. It's um, it, there used to be times when I was a kid I used to hang out with my friends and if it was raining, um, couldn't do anything and you'd, sometimes you'd put that on 
just to almost laugh, which sounds cruel because it, you know those guys are working, they're doing the best they can, but how you've got to just talk and talk and talk just to try and flog something. It's like how, how many ways, it's like if these clamps were on QVC, how many ways I would have to talk about these clamps for an hour? <laughs> how soul destroying that would be. And I'm not saying everybody's doing that on YouTube these days, but there looks like there's been a much greater proliferation of like what they call like paid for content, it looks like, where you've got someone who's maybe doing a presentation and it's sponsored by so-and-so and they may be sharpening or they've got a doohickey that you put on a table saw to hold timber and all the rest of it. And then you go to their affiliate links and all the rest of it. And good luck with that. I mean, I'm not, people must do whatever they want. It's, it's a free country and earning money through sponsorship allows things like sports and lots of other things to happen. So, so go with it. But one of the things I would hate about that kind of process is that I would always feel indebted to whoever I was uh, dealing with. So here's a, for instance, um, if you're into hand tool woodworking, you know, you ain't going to get sponsored for, for, because that just doesn't happen. That there isn't the, the money in it. It's not like say motorsport that if you are, um, lucky enough to be brilliant, um, you know, some kind of ridiculously sugar saturated energy drink will um, throw cash at you. Even if you happen to be the best furniture maker in the world, what you'd be doing is earning money by making furniture. Um, you wouldn't have good quality tool companies sponsoring you. It would be, you know, that just doesn't happen. And I think that's quite good. So for instance, um, I think Veritas is a really stand up company. I, I like them a lot, but I don't like everything that they do. Um, I think this side clamping honing guide, I've just done some initial testing and I think it's an excellent upgrade for those people who don't like buying the kind of um, cheap copies of the Eclipse guide for whatever reason. Um, everybody's reasons are their own. But it's, it's a nice item. I've, I've read places where people have had problems with it, um, skewed blades and all the rest of it. I couldn't create that. You've got to make sure that it's all in the jaws properly. Um, but that's the same with any honing guide. And you do still have to steer a honing guide. It's not like you can just press go and the thing gives you a perfect edge. But I love the freedom to be able to talk openly about it. Um, one thing I have used with Veritas before is they're more like uh, I don't know what they call them, like their classic bench planes, not their custom ones, but the ones that have, um, I don't know, I think they do just four of them, like a, a four plane, uh, a jack plane and two smoothers. And I've got to be honest, I, I think they're awful planes. <laughs> it's like if if you want to pick a plane that you're going to copy, um, you know, and I, I really mean this, it's like here it is, it, the invention has already been perfected. It's like you don't need to make a square wheel. And as much as I love some of the Veritas products, it's like they invented a lever. Well, they didn't invent the lever cap that they use is used on lots of tools, but these lever caps, click, it's off. Tension is maintained the same every time. You don't have to do it with a thumb screw. It's a great time saver. They went away from that. You know, good luck to them. You know, they're not bad people. That isn't the point of this discussion. And they went for the Norris adjuster. I'm sure some of you watching this will be like, oh, I love the Norris adjuster. To me, it sucks. Here, you can adjust as you go, hands in position. You can be in contact all the time. You don't have to bring your hand up here and fiddle about with anything. So that's what I like to be able to do is to say, hey, I really like that thing from so-and-so. I think it's great. Um, and then from somebody else, it's like, do you know what? I really think that stinks. Well, that's not how I would go about it. And talking of things that really irritate me, um, I'm going to be doing uh, a video at some point on uh, honing and sharpening because that's one of those subjects that always comes up about woodworking all the time. And there's a thing where most people have a like a sequence of stones that they go through for honing an edge. And my interest with that was it's like, well, I don't know how recent that is. Um, because like back in the day, you'd buy, you'd see like people would just have one stone for honing on. 
and the quality of the work that was done you know many years ago certainly eclipses what you see from the majority of people on woodworking channels who are doing just maybe promotions on sharpening i mean you people are just doing incredible work and to do that i thought well i i want to experiment with some of the sharpening media that's available now i kind of boiled it down thinking well i want something that you don't have to soak you know you can still get a uh, water stone that doesn't soak so i got one of those um, I got a diamond plate and I got uh, an oil stone, all brand new, so you can still get them now, just to give them a bit of a try. I thought I'll see who's out there to buy from, and I went away from one of my normal tool retailers and actually bought them from a um, kitchen product retailer, which was um, one called Kitchen Provisions. Really good website, decent products. It's um, there's an Atoma diamond plate in there and a Shapton 1000 grit water stone really good and they had a nice feature on their site which is like sometimes you get like a coupon or whatever um and i copied and pasted that in thinking oh you, you might get a discount or whatever or it was like spin a wheel and it's like well, put in your code see what you get and what was really really annoying with that was that it then gave you a countdown it's like oh you've got 10 minutes if you don't check out within 10 minutes you're not going to get these benefits and i i found that so disappointing that you'd be put in a pressure sale situation even when you're buying online um it's like well if you want me to hang around and i still went through with the purchase anyway because i wanted them and i'd done the car and it's like well I'm, I'm gonna do it but i think it might have been if i'd maybe added something else to the car i could have got it for a bit cheaper it's like really do we do you have to pressurize people where it's like oh panic it's like ebay if you get your notifications it's like I've, I've, I've not bought any second-hand tools for a while um, but if you're watching something on eBay um, you'll get a message to it. it's like oh hurry 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 something it's like you can just notify me you don't have to hype me up it's like are you it's not healthy to do that to people it genuinely isn't I mean I'm relatively well balanced I think there's maybe some people in, in life that aren't and I think if you give people that kind of frenziedness you know it's like I don't think it's so good it's like um again this is really off topic but I like sport um I'm not obsessive about the stuff I like watching a game of football or what a lot of people in the world called soccer um I can't watch a lot of it live because it's behind quite an expensive paywall but I watch highlights and if you watch some of that on YouTube it's like bang bang gambling 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 and it's like wow it's like if you almost feel like you're press ganged into stuff sometimes it's like that i find you know so so annoying um so yeah like i said you can see at the minute this kind of video is just me randomly talking um i think i had a comment once about someone saying so oh, maybe do a podcast i don't know if i'd have the skill to do that because i don't have time to prepare stuff this is almost an experiment to think does my talking interest anybody does somebody think well, you can put this on in the background or like sometimes i do i might just listen to something quietly in a chair because there's just nonsense on tv i'd rather listen to somebody that i find interesting even if they don't have much of a following if they chime in with what i'm thinking um that's interesting to me um so yeah that's that's that really um like i mentioned in a video i did recently about that um chisel that i picked up from a um, flea market car boot sale i'd use the word flea market it's not a common term in the uk they do a flea market in my town they actually call it a flea market um but broadly it's like kind of car boot sales or that kind of stuff and i touched on that about using abrasive um again something i'd recommend anybody to do is that if you're um, maintaining as it were the sole of a plane or you have to true up the sole of a plane get some coarse paper all right don't be faffing about with your 220s your 240s that's a finishing paper like <laughs> that's like putting your fine finish on if you want to make good defects if you want to remove some material get some 80 you know see how that goes you know don't, 220 is when everything is right you've got everything level and you're like boom i'm there finish off um and here was another thing I can talk about. And again, if, if it just gets lost in this video, it'll be coming up with um, something else. Um, again, on to sharpening. I'm somebody who 
when possible, as a broad rule of thumb, I'll grind, have a grind bevel, and then I'll do a secondary bevel to hone. So that makes it easier to work with just one honing stone. And I was really trying to think about how I would recommend what is the best kind of grinding media. Um, and I've shown there like on a couple of videos using just a, a tile and a honing guide and some abrasive. That's a really slow way to do it, but it's fine and it's really accessible and you can't go wrong. So I think if, you, if you're if new and I've got to assume like somebody maybe knows nothing, it's like, well, it's safe, consistent, low cost of entry. And I've been thinking about the whole high speed grinder um, side of things, which a lot of people use and they're good. Um, but I was reading a book on sharpening recently and it's not a new one. It was um, one that came out in the 90s and it made a good point in there, which I see in all the instruction manuals for new bench grinders, is that if you're using a high speed bench grinder, you need to wear a mask, which is something nobody seems to talk about. Everyone always seems to talk about, you know, generating heat in the tool steel and um, drawing the temper out and burning the steel. Um, they'll never talk about all the dust that gets thrown up into the air. And a lot of people are keen on wheels that are friable. And by that, it just means that when you introduce the tool to the wheel, the abrasive is cut off quickly and thrown up into the air. And a lot of people say, oh, I love how quick the, the high speed grinders are because boom, boom, you're done. And they are quick. But if every time you want to grind, if you're actually going to be responsible, you need to put on a mask. Um, you need to put on proper eye protection because a wheel can explode on you if you if you do something stupid or if there's a defect in the wheel. Yep, if you use a CBN wheel, that's probably not going to happen or something else. But I thought, and again, it's like, well, you can't just use random extraction. You'd have to use some kind of specific extraction to take away grinder dust. And I know at work we use a Tormac because then there's no sparks. So from our insurance company's point of view, they don't like what they call like hot work or any grinding to happen. So the more we can minimize that, the better. And I thought by the time you add up, sticking on a mask, maybe buying extraction for um, a high speed grinder, an appropriate one that isn't gonna catch fire. And it, you know, with masks, um, it isn't any good if you've got a beard, just chucking on a face, like a face mask, it doesn't work. You know, if you've got a beard, you need to have one of those over the head jobbies that um, extracts. Um, look up 3M VersaFlow. That's the one that I use at work if I'm in the spray shop or maybe I'm doing something where I can't control the dust with extraction. That's what you need to put on if you use a grinding wheel. And it's like a lot of people say, oh, the Tormax really slow. It's like, well, it's not if you use it as it's supposed to be, which is you know, if you've got a, a chisel and some of mine are perhaps not in the best of condition up here, um, let's find one that might demonstrate a point relatively well. well there's one here, the, the primary bevel on this one is getting a bit fat, but if you don't let that get too fat and you're just using it, say, you know, you're honing away and you've had two or three days honing, all you need to do is drop that back onto a, onto a water stone wheel and to just grind that back and it's not going to take you long. And the nice thing about one of those water star wheels is there is no dust, so that's good. Um, the wheel doesn't spin quickly, so it doesn't flick water everywhere. All those metal particles, like I said, they're caught in, in suspension in the water and kept away. So it is actually clean. I found using a high-speed grinder here in the garage, I did find it made more mess than our Tormac at work. Again, we're all different. Some people are going to go, well, that's nonsense. I, I much prefer a high speed grinder, but it's like, well, probably need to, we need to make clear to people that you need to protect yourself with a mask. People need to read the instructions they get with a grinder or a grinding wheel and take it seriously. You know, the, I don't know what they make up some of those grinding wheels with, but you know, whether it's the, the grinding of the metal or the dust coming off the wheel, getting up into your lungs, that's, that's not very clever. So I reflected carefully and I did some looking around and I found a um, quite a large diameter um, water bath grinding wheel. It's not a Tormac, it's a lot cheaper. Um, so we'll, do, we'll take a look at that. And it was something I had to really, really think about because it, the high speed grinder, I thought it's good. It's definitely got its use as if I was using wood turning tools. And when I eventually get my lathe set up, um, I'd be wearing a, a mask over my head 
with and that would be all working so i wouldn't mind touching my tools up then because i'm protected from all the particles um and some of you might think all oh, that sounds mental but i think it's important if you're trying to give people guidance just saying oh you know buy like a yard sale grinder and just chuck a, a friable wheel on it it's like well what hazards are there with that you know and as people who are watching youtube videos never take anything i'm saying for gospel i'm i'm not here to be your spirit guide and, and uh, authoritative guide through woodworking do some research stuff is dangerous woodworking is inherently dangerous um chisels are lethal you know um leaving sharp stuff hanging around is is bad and um, draw knives have big exposed blades on them yet yeah, if you use them properly it's safe but you do anything properly it's safe you know riding a motorcycle properly is safe um but stuff can go wrong and on a high-speed grinder if a wheel breaks up and you forgot to put your mask on or your, your sorry your, your eye protection you could lose an eye you know so i i'm more than happy to wait maybe 30 or 40 seconds longer because i would maybe counter some people's argument and then say oh i use a honing guide it's like well by the time i clip my tool in a honing guide i've wait i've easily gained back the time by freehand honing and i use one stone to hone rather than some people who use a sequence of three you know so i think we can all start arguing against each other too much um so yeah i don't know if i've just bounced around too much there i genuinely don't know i don't know if anybody's found this interesting some feedback would be useful i don't want anybody to kiss my ass um if i said look this is too unstructured this is just drivel then just tell me you know i i it's not like i couldn't care less but i'm certainly not going to be offended um so yeah and so just going back to that topic on like the whole qvc style woodworking stuff it's it's so interesting i there's i can't watch some stuff with it because it the stuff that i want to see personally and i guess you just don't see this on youtube because a lot of people want to make a living out of it and making a living out of it means probably not doing youtube because as, as like demonstrating how to make stuff um it's easier to sell somebody else's product or to do a promo video um yeah i just I, I don't know i don't know i just feel i just don't feel comfortable with that and here's here's the great one i was thinking of sports analogy um you can look up this guy um he was never the world's greatest footballer i mean he got to the elite level and i'm talking about soccer here not football soccer and where i'm in the uk so it's called football because you kick the ball with your foot you know and not with your socks i don't know where soccer came from i guess it came from somewhere um and i think he was called benoit asarakotu i'll try and put a link in the description but what really stood out for me with him is that he famously he was obviously very well paid he's very good at his job exceptionally good and usually with with doing that you have all the trappings which is like um uh, the boot sponsors will come in and say hey, i'll give you your football boots if we can say that you know you wear adidas or nike or whatever they are you get extra money you get paid an extra however much a year and you know if you're cristiano ronaldo you know he's got his whole cr7 line of boots and whatnot and again i don't mind people are doing that that's totally legal and above board and, and that's fine but his whole view was i <laughs> you have to you'd have to check the quote but he was like i'm not going to whore myself to make money out of football boots that i can buy on ebay for 30 quid um and i thought that was brilliant you know and a lot of people have got different views they will say well, it's like well footballer's career is short at any time you could have a horrific injury and you've got to completely change how you do things so take the money while it's available but what i liked was the message where it was like well you know certainly if you're younger or you just play the game for fun you don't have to worry about having the latest greatest boots just go on to ebay and buy some some boots for 30 or 40 quid and you can be you're an elite player the boots don't make a difference it's your skill level and your commitment and and the work ethic that's what gets you there and that's why i like highlighting stuff like these f clamps from a supermarket or you know hand planes that are inexpensive if you can get hold of them or what you can achieve with a chisel that you find from a flea market you know that's it's never to knock um 
a company like Veritas where I think they make some of the most affordable stuff which is excellent to use but to me they're bench chisels it's like it's they're close in the UK they're nearly 100 quid for a bench chisel and it's like for me that just doesn't make sense and I don't even like the look of their chisels very much um it's like you can get a hand plane for 20 or 30 quid you can buy a marking gauge for two pound fifty five pounds at a car boot sale it's like the the reason why it's good to highlight those things as well it's like well they're, they're all effective tools they were used by tradespeople. you know they're just left washed up now because they're not needed as much as they once were so you can do that whole Benoit Asaracotu thing which is like well I, I want to be a woodworker I don't need to spend out on all the latest and greatest or what we assume to be the latest and greatest stuff I can pick up you know the football boots for 30 quid i.e the Bailey plane for 30 quid it's just as good as anything else but it's what but between your ears and your skill level that's what takes you forward if you just want to be making stuff now I like supporting good companies as much as the next person and I bought myself a Veritas router plane because I liked I wanted a router plane for a while because a lot of people made a lot of fuss about it I never really used a router plane at all um, when I did my apprenticeship you had to learn how to do the joints with a chisel you kind of you did like half lap joints first when I was at college then the morts and tenons and various other stuff and it was all just done with chisel control and then putting a like a combination square blade on it and making sure you were just chiseled out the housing flat but so many people really raved about router planes I thought well what am I missing I need to find out and for me the Veritas one was the most affordable one um, again you can watch YouTube videos and get drawn into the in the minutiae of how all those things work but it was very good value I felt for 170 quid it's not cheap that's why again I recommend things like Bailey planes affordable F clamps when you can find them a cheap honing guide because sometimes then when you do have to pony up a bit of cash you've maybe got it there um, to, to spend and if you buy one of those router planes they're always in demand as long as you look after it you'll be able to sell it and get your money back you know you might lose maybe 20 pounds which is absolutely fine and why I like supporting someone like Veritas is they they do what they do and they do it in a unique way and like I said sometimes that falls flat I don't like their classic bench planes I've never touched one of their custom planes so I can't make a judgment but I have touched the other ones and they they were so inferior in my opinion to these that they just weren't any good but the router plane is good it's it's different in appearance completely to the the classic design it's got the cranked out handles they were the first ones to do that um it's very comprehensive with how it's how it works I've used it a bit I haven't had any of those slipping problems that people have talked about with the tool adjuster they even thought about it for people who maybe find it difficult to hone the tool a way that you can take the um, cutting edge of it off and put it on like a little honing stick I didn't need that it's like it's a router plane it's like my god the thing is so easy to hone by hand I'm more likely to lose the little hex key in the in the in the shavings than I am not be able to hone it um but I just loved how they did something just that little bit different it's really effective and they did it they didn't copy anybody um they just came up and it, and it works and it's a popular router plane and it is for a reason it's a good tool um and a lot of people I think overuse them you know they they they're, they almost try and think that the I think perhaps maybe if you're more of a power tool kind of guy you, you'll you'll want to dial it have this concept where you dial stuff in you, you're trying to work it on all these different surfaces and I guess just from the angle that I'm coming at that always looks a little bit a little, little bit weird so yeah that's a bit of a longer form video it's me talking random rubbish I guess you might be able to listen to this kind of drivel if you were driving if it wasn't too distracting or also annoying my voice sounds awful and quite nasally I am really trying to enunciate my words um, but if you liked this I don't mind doing a few more longer vlogs that you can turn them into almost, almost um, you know borderline podcasts that you can listen to but yeah see what you think and don't be afraid to be brutally critical because this isn't my livelihood it's just me in a garage having fun after I come home from work and I've got a bit of spare time
All right, so I hope you have a great evening and um, we'll catch up soon.